How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this render right here and I'm gonna show you how to animate it. So it's a lot of geometry nodes, fun, some shading nodes and a little bit of compositing. So we will get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so just clear out everything from your scene and we are going to be using cycles. Now you can use Eevee if you'd like, but if you remember in the original uh, render I showed, there were these spheres inside the larger spheres. That's using glass. You won't be able to do that in Eevee. So if you wanna use Eevee, you just won't be able to use that particular part of the design. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to my GPU. Now for your light paths, cause this is gonna be kind of a hefty render for cycles, total at three and then all of these of your uh, your light bounces here turn off reflective and reflective <laughs> reflective and refractive caustics i'm going to go at 500 samples you can bring it down if you want we can probably get away with 300. all right so now that we're here we can go ahead and start designing so let's go ahead and just put a plane right here in the scene and go straight to geometry nodes the majority of this is going to be geometry nodes so i'm going to click new and delete this group output and we're gonna get in a shift A search or you know, just shift A mesh primitives grid. Now we're going to go one by nine and then on the vertices, we're gonna do nine here and 22 here. And that's gonna give you some nice faces and we want them to be kind of triangular. So we're gonna get a triangulate node. So we'll just type shift A search, triangulate, put it right there. Now we have this triangulated thing. So we're pretty much done here. What we need to do is go ahead and add in a um, displacement and we're gonna click new. And then right here, where I'm gonna go ahead and pick image and movie, use clouds, bring my depth down, kind of play with my size till I like how plexus-ish it's looking. And then I'm gonna hit shift A and get an empty and then click back on that plane, go to the modifiers and right here on coordinates, we're gonna go to local to object and select that empty we just created, which is right there. So uh, there it is. And then now if you hit on the empty, if you click on the empty and you hit R twice, you can actually now animate. So this is how you're gonna animate the design once we get to that part of the tutorial. Um, and you'll just animate it in a 360 loop. It's gonna be all good. So let's go back to modifiers. And we need to add a new geometry nodes modifier. Typically you can stay within, within the, that node tree, but because we displaced it outside of geometry nodes, um, we have to get a new geometry nodes workspace. I know you can displace within geometry nodes, but animating it became just kind of crazy. So if you wanna animate it, we're gonna wanna displace outside of geometry nodes. All right, let's get another geometry nodes tree, which go here modifiers and add a geo nodes. And then uh, you have this group input. Let's go ahead and instance. So shift a instance on points. And then I'm going to go here to my mesh primitives and get an icosphere, subdivide it by three and plug it into the instance. I'm going to hit a, uh, I'm going to search a smooth, set shade smooth, smooth that out. And then right here in your radius, bring that down to right about there. So now we have these spheres going around. Now we need to go ahead and do this again. So let's go ahead and highlight these. I'm gonna hit Shift D, put it down here, and bring this up. And then we can get this group input, plug it into points, get a join geometry node, plug that there, put the geometry in here. I'm gonna go right up here to the wireframe view because what we need to do is right here, click and drag. And as you can see, we have these smaller spheres going in the inside of these, and that is what we wanna do for these gives it that real kind of medical cellular kind of look. 
and then we're gonna add a little bit of an organic look here on these bigger spheres. So let's get a random value. Random value node, and then we'll plug it right into the scale. And then right here on minimum, we wanna bring that minimum up a little bit like this. And now we have a more organic look throughout our spheres like that. And then what I also wanna do is the input that's going into the larger spheres. Let's destroy or delete some of those faces. I was about to say destroy. Let's delete. So let's go ahead and separate separate geometry and then let's go get a uh, random a random value again. Let's go here to Boolean so we just get one value. Plug that into selection and then you can bring that po probability all the way up. And you can bring it all the way down, all the way up. So basically, I just want to expose a couple random little spheres. So that's what we'll want to. That's what I want to do here. There we go. Exposed a couple of those, and that's really going to work out. Now you can see some of them don't have the middle; they're just standing alone. That's what I wanted. Let's go ahead and connect all of these together. So I'm going to bring my join geometry and my group input down here, and let's get this group input down here too. So let's go ahead and get a mesh to curve. I've done this so many times, but this is one of my favorite looks for motion graphics. So we're gonna use it a lot. Um, for that, plug that in the mesh and then curve to mesh, curve to mesh, plug the curve into the curve and mesh into geometry. We have that whole connection and we need to get a curved circle. So, so search circle. Uh, curve circle right there plug that into curve profile and on the radius 0 0.002 is really going to work out for this design there we go we've created that plexus look and then what i want to do is get three material nodes so set set material plug that there plug that there and plug that there so now the larger spheres on the outside, the smaller spheres in the middle, and these lines are gonna be able to have individual materials for each of those, and that's what we wanna do. So now we can start shading this. So I'm gonna hit this drop down and do this, and let's make three materials. So let's make one, we can actually just go ahead and make one metallic material, like that, and make it kind of mid-dark. So we'll call this wire, that's gonna go in the wire, we're gonna call this light metal. It really doesn't matter what you call it, and I already misspelled it, hit a key, uh, but that's okay. Let's make it metallic right here, make it mid dark, but we're gonna be, we're gonna be adding a light onto it. And then we're gonna make a glass. So let's make a new one. We'll just call it glass and bring your um, transmission all the way up and your roughness all the way down. All right, so now we can go ahead and apply these. So this is the curve to mesh, so that's going to need the wire. These are the smaller balls, so we're gonna go with the light metal. And then on the larger balls, we're gonna give it the glass material. If we check it out here in cycles, it is working how we want. So now we can go to the shading tab and actually make this look really cool. So let's head over to shading. And um, right here, we're gonna hit this drop down and we're gonna to go to the light metal right here, slot number two. So what we're gonna do is, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a color ramp, plug the color ramp into the emission and we're gonna get a layer weight, layer weight node, plug the facing into the color ramp and make this color a nice vibrant red and then bring that strength up and then bring your blend back a little bit and then bring the color ramp back and then bring that strength up some more. So there we go, we have that. But I don't want that basically, I don't want that emission to be on every single thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take this principle, I'm gonna move this up. I'm gonna take this principled and I'm gonna hit Shift D and move that up. And then let's get a mix shader. So mix shader, we're gonna plug that into here. So now that those both of those are plugged in the mix shader, Let's get a color ramp. So now we're gonna get some stuff to break those two up. So color ramp, noise texture, and a object info. 
So we're gonna get our object info node, use the random socket, plug factor into the color ramp, the color ramp into the mix shader, and we're gonna go from linear to constant. And now when we bring this thing in, we're getting just random objects with that light. And that is really the, the look we're trying to go for for this. Now we've created this whole thing. I'm gonna make this a little less rough, including this one, and then click slot. We'll go here to the wire and make that a little less rough as well. So now we have this whole thing uh, created. Now we can actually start creating our scene to make this look awesome. And if you're curious how this looks when it animates, I'm gonna hit R and it looks really cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A and get a plane. I'm gonna plane and then I'm just gonna go ahead and um, hit R, rotate it and then hit G to move it back. And then this is gonna be basically our background for our light. So I'm gonna go Shift A, get my camera and turn it around right there. Control Alt Zero, snap to view and then I'm gonna hit R and rotate. I'm hitting R again, just like this. Something like that looks cool. And let's see how this looks here in cycles. So let's go get hit, let's, let's get a light. So Shift A and get in a light area light, I'm gonna hit G and move it up. I'm gonna hit R to rotate it, and then we're gonna make it bright. Something like this. And then give it a nice blue, something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and in the shape, let's make it a disc, and then move it close enough. We can even move this back. And then in our world, we're gonna make our color black. So we'll click back on that area light and make it a lot brighter. So something like this, click on the plane, let's click a new, a new material and we'll just make it pretty dark, something like this. So that we can go back to our area light and make it like, I don't know, 2000, 2000 on the strength, maybe 3000. Cool, that's what we'll do. And then I'm gonna hit Shift D and I'm gonna move this light, I'm hitting G to move this light around. I'm gonna hit R to rotate it. So just hitting G and R. So we can get some light coming up this direction. And I'm gonna take this plane and move it up. So let's go ahead and move this light back by hitting G. And then let's just see how this looks um, rendered out. So now we have this so far. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead in the camera view by hitting zero, I'm gonna hit R and kind of move it this direction. So see how I'm doing that? Moving my mouse so that it moves in that direction. And the reason why is because I'm gonna start with some, uh, some uh, depth of field. So click on your camera, click on the little green camera icon and click on depth of field and bring that bring that f-stop down to zero and then play with your distance. That distance is gonna really gonna give you this cookie cutter, um, basically depth of field and then bring your f-stop back up to widen your depth of field and I did it way too much. So it looks like I'm right here and let's just go ahead and render and see how this looks. So this is how we're looking so far. It's really cool. A um, Couple changes I wanna make. I do wanna make some of these spheres larger. So I'm gonna go back here to uh, geometry nodes, hit zero. And first thing I wanna do actually is click on the first geometry nodes and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself more faces. I basically, I want some more density. So here in the vertices, I'm just going ahead and adding some more vertices. And then we'll go ahead and click on the second Geometry Nodes workspace and make the larger spheres just larger. So that's gonna be here on the random value node, the little blue random value node. Bring your max up a little bit higher. So now when we look at this, it's gonna be a little bit more dense, a little bit more microscopic looking. And then also here on the circle curve, I'm gonna give it 0 0.003, so just a little bit thicker. And then let's go ahead and render this again and see how it looks. All right, so this is looking really, really cool. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and give my displacement up some more strength. Maybe you can hear my cat in the background. Um, and then maybe just kind of move this around, maybe continue with that strength a little bit. Something like this. So this is looking good. And then let's go ahead in the compositing. I'm gonna click use nodes. Make sure you have one rendered out. Cause um, I hit the, once you hit the render button, let it render through, it'll give you the uh, access to your render. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hold down shift and right click doing that. And I'm gonna hit a glare node. So what this shows me, I'm gonna go to fog glow. And what this shows me is that that backlight is too bright and these red lights are not bright enough. So what we're gonna do here is um, here on this area light back here, let's go ahead and make it a thousand on the brightness. And then here in our shading, let's find the light metal. And it looks like it's at a emission strength of 5,600. But really the issue is the layer weight um, shape. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit more prevalent something like this and then make it like 300 on the brightness. Let's render it out and see how the compositing looks. So now that it's rendered out, you can see that light is really working out pretty well uh, with this design. And then what I'm gonna do is take my color ramp and just crunch these in a little bit, but we're still gonna get that brightness. We can even crunch in this back end to get that brightness. Let's bring this color forward, just get these nice rings in our design and there we have it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this whole thing. I'm gonna hit Alt D to put one up there and hit Alt D and put one down here. So you just get this interesting composition. Maybe scale this one up so that all of this looks really cool. And then we'll do our final render. I'm just gonna hit G and move this here. Maybe hit R like that and then move it up again. So now that we have this, let me just show you how we are gonna animate this. So if you want this to be animated, say over 250 frames, what we'll do is click on this empty and then right here on the transform, you can animate everything. And so say, we'll just start it here and then go to the very end. You can loop it if you just go by a 360 degree or you can just keep it simple and do something like that, click it. And then now you can see this plexus thing animates in a really cool way. And you can see how that looks here. Very cool, very interesting. I'm gonna click the render button just to show you the final image. So here is my final image. It's a little sloppy on the design side. I, I definitely would go ahead and improve some of the composition. On mine, it took a lot longer for me to figure out my exact composition, um, but this is the design. Now you can go ahead and move your camera around, move around your materials, have a lot more fun with this concept. Uh, Geometry Nodes is super powerful. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to check out real-time materials, that is in the description. And I will see you in the next tutorial.